Hey everyone, Mackie here with Ironside Ranch and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about fencing, specifically um, how to do a high tensile fence. I wanted to go over the high tensile fence and that's actually why we haven't been uh, had a video out in a couple weeks is because we've been really busy getting this uh, our first uh, paddock actually fenced in. We're going to start working on the second one here in the next month or two. Uh, we've been doing a lot of clearing up here. As you guys know, our land here is all timber. So we've been clearing some, taking it for firewood. Some of it we're going to be selling the timber uh, as much as we can anyways. And um, and what we're doing is we're fencing everything in. We're letting the goats go through and clear out all the underbrush. Then we're bringing the pigs in to root up everything. We're going to replant with grass after that. And then we'll bring the cows in to, to, to kind of help uh, get that soil and that grass back established. <clears throat> Um, and so the goal is to, to turn our little 20 acre ranch here into an actual working cattle farm and that's what that's what we're focusing on right now um, and you can see uh, you'll be able to see in the background here uh, in, in some of these later shots uh, some of the some of the work we've done with clearing and so we've got a lot of brush on the ground a lot of limbs um, but I want to talk about this high tensile fence because we, we learned a lot from it I've set up a lot of fences and high tensile fence is one of the few that I've, I've never done before um, and so this was kind of a learning experience for me on how to do this and uh, so I wanted to, to talk to you guys about it. Now we used a high tensile fence wire and then some of it was electrified and some of it is not. Um, and we'll go over some pros and cons there. So the first thing that, uh, that I would say is as far as doing any type of livestock in here with a high tensile fence is in, going forward in the future every uh, fence we do each wire will be electrified we won't have any that are that are just normal wires uh, all of them will do electrified um, six strand wire seems to work pretty well for goats not great uh, they do still get out of it and they can squeeze through it uh, but that we'll go into here in just a minute um, but uh, for the cows the cows are going to be able to get out of this quite so easy unless obviously they're willing to break the wire now the reason the goats can get out of it is because the wire, even when you pull that high tensile fence wire, um, it, there's a little bit of give in it. And uh, with, that, with that give, when you do your, your um, T-posts and you have them too far apart, or far apart for cattle, set up for cattle, it doesn't quite work for goats. So for goats, you really need to have those T-posts about 12 feet on center uh, for, for a six-strand wire. If you're gonna do more wires, you can do a little bit further out on center with those T-posts, just depends on how you're gonna set it up. For cows, Greg Judy says you can do it 30 feet on center. What we found here is that that's not gonna work no matter what because our terrain is so hilly here, we needed to do some more and we needed to, we needed to have a few more T-posts in there. So for the next one, we'll probably do our, our T-posts about 15 feet on center and we'll do, like I said, we'll do a, a six or an eight strand wire fence and we'll set it up so where each one of them is electrified. Um, if there's any kink in your wire at all, your wire is gonna snap. So you might as well just make sure that those, that those aren't in there when you first set it up. But uh, you can pull that wire pretty dang tight. Um, and some people say not to pull it super tight. Other people say to have it really, really tight. Um, we, we went back and forth on this. And what we ended up doing is we pulled one of the springs, the other springs. And we set that and, we, and we, we pulled it tight to where that spring was right in the middle. And uh, from there, we um, uh, checked the tension just by hand for all the other wires to make sure they were similar. One of the issues that we had is we brought our high tensile fence all the way around the perimeter of this first, this first pasture, uh, which is about uh, two acres. And we brought it all the way around the perimeter of that first pasture. And um, bringing it around that, the wire, there's enough friction on each of the corner posts that the wire really struggled to pull tight. Uh, except for where the ratchet was at. So on the next one we do, we'll run it corner to corner, um, each line individually. Um, and that's a lot easier way to set it up. It's also a lot easier way to run your wire. That wire is a pain in the butt to run. And it's, uh, they come in 4,000 foot rolls. It's heavy, it's thick. It wants to continually kink and wind on you. Um, it is a pain in the butt to run. So make sure you have a spinning jenny. I tried to rig something to do this one and it was a nightmare to deal with it and I'll never do it again. So get a spinning jenny to actually run that wire with. But then when you run that wire, uh, like I said, just go a straight run, make your ends and then do another straight run after that corner. Don't try to wrap it around a corner. It's just a pain, it's not worth it and it's much, much easier and gives you a much more solid, much tighter fence. And then you've actually got two opposing forces that are gonna be pulling against each other to keep those corner posts really, really nice and tight. Okay, the next thing was corners. Um, and you can see back here, uh, back behind me, uh, we, we have a corner there. 
Uh, there's a couple ways to do it in the corners, and um, with this corner, what we did is we just did the three posts and then did the H bracket between it. You can see it's on a slight hillside. That's why that H bracket is. Uh, they're, they're they're all different levels there, um, but. Uh, you can, some people do one more post and one more post on either side. There's a couple reasons why we elected to do that. Um, and mostly because of ease and because of price. So at the end of the day, there comes a point where you have to determine what is the most cost effective way to get the longevity out of my fence. If that means I have to rebuild a fence in 20 years, so be it. That's not the end of the world to, to replace small sections. I don't want to rebuild fences, but there's hardly a fence out there that lasts forever. Even going forward, we'll probably always do those three corner posts. Um, the high tensile fence, uh, we found that we didn't need to put a, um, a diagonal wire in the corner post to keep them tight. The high tensile fence itself does all that for you. Again, if you separate your corners and bring one where you bring it around this way and the other one you bring it around that way, you have those opposing forces. That would tighten it up even more and it would be even less uh, necessary to do that. We did put a diagonal brace on every one with a gate, so anything that has a gate has a, either a wire or a wood diagonal brace on it. Uh, the wire diagonal brace seems to work a lot better keeping those gates taut um, and uh, and all of our gates have done really really well they don't sag uh, we have not had any issues with them so we've been very very happy with the way that we did that as far as the t-post we use seven foot t-posts um, i do not think that that was probably necessary part of the reason we did that here is because our soil is so much clay here um, that uh, we wanted to get the, just that little bit of extra in the ground to help hold it steady um, I will probably do seven foot on everything going forward from here, but if I was in real hard, uh, you know, crushed granite ground or something along those lines, um, I would be a lot more inclined to just use a, uh, a six and a half foot or even a six foot post. Uh, I think that'd be plenty. We did use, a f uh, we put everything at five feet, um, and so that again was part of the reason for the seven foot post. Uh, but the reality of it is, is that the T post really just kind of hold the wire in place. It's the corner post is where the strength comes from. So the corner post is where you really want to have that investment as far as your, your, uh, rigidness of your fence. Now that being said, the, one of the things that we found there was a lot of debate on is what best to pack your um, fence post with. Concrete, the original soil that you pulled out of it, or uh, gravel, crushed concrete, something along those lines, peat gravel, something along that line. Um, we tried all three, and there was one that stood out above everything else, and that was by far the gravel. Gravel held the post tighter. Part of that is probably due to our soil, but uh, concrete loosens up over time here because concrete is only as strong as the soil around the concrete. Um, and so, but that gravel, even as that soil kind of expands and contracts, that gravel continually settles down in it and it actually works with the soil and it holds those posts in there really tight. Then at the same time, it's really easy. You have damaged posts or anything like that that you need to pull out. You just pull them out and you can run that auger bit right through the same spot. And it's real, real easy to redrill it um, and to make, to, to, to make repairs to your fence. Um, but uh, whereas concrete, you got to make sure you get all that concrete out of there, otherwise you'll damage your bit. Uh, the next thing was how to get your fence really, really tight. And uh, again, there's different methods on this. Some people buy the little attachments for a come along. Some people use the wire tightener, and then um, other people use the ratchet sets you can buy that actually go into the wire. Um, hands down, by far the easiest and most convenient way is to use those little ratchets that go into the wire. Uh, you get them at Tractor Supply or wherever. Um, and uh, they, they, they ratchet down, you buy a little special tool to, to, to do them with, and it is so simple, so easy, so slick, it makes a nice fence. They can carry an electric current right through them, so there's no need to, to splice a jumper around it or anything. Um, it's a very, very simple, easy way of getting your wire tight and creating a lot less work for you, rather than trying to tighten it and wrap it at the same time and have those issues. Uh, it's just a lot easier to get, that, to get that in there. That ratchet, you can also come back and adjust later, so you can adjust the tension on your fence as the weather makes the metal and the wood contract and re-expand. Um, you have a lot of options here if you have that ratchet on there you can make adjustments. Now the question was how to connect wires, how to make your joints and uh, that's what we found was a, the, the easiest way was a swaging tool. There's different knots you can tie. We tried them all. Uh, we, the knots, they seem to hold okay. They certainly don't look as pretty. Um, the swaging tool just makes a nice clean break in the wire. Um, and then they, there's different recommendations as far as how many. We just found that we just kind of overkilled those swaging tools because, or those, those the swage locks on there, uh, just because they're so cheap it doesn't, and it doesn't take anything else to throw an extra one on there. Uh, so generally speaking, we did three to four of those swaging tools each time uh, we made any type of splice. If it was going around a corner or around a post or something, there was enough friction around the post, we just used three there. But anytime we made a straight on splice, we went ahead and used four on that. 
That also keeps you from having the issue of the wire kinking at the knot and breaking the wire at the knot, which was also something that we ran across whenever we tried to tie certain types of knots at those wires. Some came recommended, some didn't. We tried different methods on it. Um, anytime we did that, the wires broke at certain points in time when you got any type of kink in that wire trying to bend it back. Plus, this gauge wire is a pain to, uh, to try to tie. It doesn't want to tie well. It kind of constantly wants to fight against you on it. And uh, it's just much easier to leave it straight and hook it together and, and swage it. And those swages are more than strong enough to hold up. One thing to keep in mind when you're going up and down hills, uh, use more wood posts rather than metal T-posts. We got a couple spots of the fence that rose up as soon as we tightened the wires and it pulled the T-posts up out of the ground, uh, which I've, I've dealt with before. And you usually just weigh them down with rocks. Uh, but this high tensile fence is so tight in there uh, that even weighing those down with rocks didn't really work that well. As far as the voltage on here, we found that 8,000 kilo or 8,000 volts was uh, about what we needed for that fence charger to actually control the goats. Uh, it certainly makes it bite, makes them think twice about pushing through. Definitely keeps the dogs away. Uh, they certainly don't like it. It's a pretty sharp bite for them. Uh, and supposedly that's good enough for cattle too, so we'll see when we get some cows up here. As far as clearing the underside of that, I saw a post the other day on Facebook where somebody was asking about the best way to do that, and I found that a big weed eater blade is about the easiest way to do that. If you get a big grass blade on a weed eater, that's about the easiest way to keep that clean underneath there um, and, uh, and, and keep that, that grass and all that crap and brush from growing up into your into your electric fence. Cattle panels we found very useful while we were doing this. Uh, we put a cattle panel anywhere where we thought we might put a gate, uh, even if we're not going to put a gate now. The cattle panels will keep everything in, um, but, uh, and, and then we can put a gate, or we can put a cattle panel there for 20 bucks. We can always add a gate later, and then we don't have to cut wires or anything like that. It's very, very easy and very simple. So, um, use, make use of some cattle panels, buy a couple of them, buy some extra ones, um, and have them around. Uh, we cut some down to four feet so we could do some man gates in some places. If you come over here to the top of each of your posts and drive a staple, or drive a staple with a little bit of wire on it, then you'll actually have uh, some ability to do repairs and have everything there handy for you. You don't have to keep a big wheel of wire around. Uh, you'll have everything there that you need to do it with. Okay guys, that about sums it up for the high tensile fence, kind of our lessons learned on it. Um, and I uh, hope this kind of helps give you guys an, an idea of what you're doing. So if you haven't done a high tensile fence, consider this kind of your high tensile fence 101 walkthrough. Uh, we really just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what we ran into. Like I said, I've done a lot of fences before. This is one I'd never messed with. So thanks again for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I hope this is informative and hope this is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just drop it down in the, uh, in the comment box. Let me know kind of some tips and tips and tricks that you found. We've got a lot more of this high tensile fence. So if I find anything else as I go through it, I'll be sure and put Oh, <laughs> oh,